is your worth in the mating market? How and who determines one's mate value? Today's video speaks to one's value or worth in the mating market because it's so common now to hear in discussions and debates on modern dating and mating that I know my worth and, and based on that, who they will not settle for as a mate. Quite often people are misjudging what their worth is and really what they are stating is an inflated view of their mate value because they believe this then allows them to be very demanding in the mating market. But the truth is the market will inform you of what your worth truly is. And this can be quite depressing when your perception of your mate value is well below how the market actually values your worth as a potential mate. This lady here we're going to look at in this video uh, not only does not know her mate value, she has an inflated sense of what she perceives her value and worth to be. It's the equivalent of a man who is like a four going after women who are eights and ignoring the women who are also fours who are interested in him and will love him and treat him respectfully and invest in him. So he would have the right, you know, to go after women who's, who are eights if he wants to, but he will be consistently outcompeted by men who are higher in mate value to him because women who are eights don't dip down to guys who are fours. They're going to go with the guys of higher mate value. So in other words, he isn't going to get a girlfriend or even hookups because women tend not to hook up with men well below their rating. And however, this same scenario plays out very differently for women than it does for, for men, which we will get into a bit later in the video. This is a hard realization, y'all. It's really hard for me to even accept that this is my life when it comes to dating. But it's like... The ones that I don't want are the ones that are putting in effort. The ones that I'm not interested in, don't like, I'm not attracted to are the ones that are really serious, wanting to plan dates, wanting to fly me out, wanting to take care of me, are genuinely showing interest, falling in love with me. And meanwhile, the ones that I do actually want, the one I'm like, that's my type. I like you. I really like you. There's chemistry there. Don't give up. Okay, there's zero dates planned, not sending flowers, not checking in, sending me little WID texts. Crumbs. Crumbs. The next video here is from Dr. David Buss, the one of the founders of evolutionary psychology. And he's been publishing research on human mating behaviors and the sexual strategies humans practice for 40 years and he's going to explain what's going on what we just saw with that woman in the previous video to you yeah. um and importantly you want to pick a mate who has a similar mate value to you that is if you're an eight you want to pick another eight if you're a six you want to go for a six because um if there's if there's too large of a mate value discrepancy the higher mate value person, so let's say a guy is mated to a woman who's a, she's a six, she's an eight, she's gonna be more likely to cheat on him and she's gonna be more likely to dump him and trade up in the mating market to, yeah. to another to eight. <clears throat> so as you know, Dr. Buss just explained, um, basically this woman is a Chevy. And a Chevy does not carry the same market value as a Mercedes. But she perceives herself as a Mercedes and wants Mercedes treatment. So a Chevy that believes it carries the same value as a Mercedes, it's never going to be selected or treated by consumers like it is a Mercedes. They're not going to pay a Mercedes price for a Chevy. So in effect, this woman wants uh, to be treated like a Mercedes and for men to value her and treat her much higher than her mate value is. And she wants the men of that higher mate value. And that, that's just not going to happen for her. Now, so this lady can attract the sexual attention of the men she prefers, but not the romantic attention of the men she prefers. And that is the big difference between men and women. 
because a woman who is an eight is not going to give sexual attention to a man who is a four. But men who are an eight, they will have sex with a woman who's a four or a five, but they will not invest material and emotional resources in that woman. So when she talks about these men are offering crumbs, that is the lack of investment that they will not offer her, but they will offer her sexual interest, but not to the point where they even want to pay for dates, give her flowers, or send her a couple text messages in a day saying, hey baby, how are you doing? So the question is how and why are so many arriving at these incorrect views of their mate value? The effect is multifactorial. <clears throat> gender equality is formally evaluated using the United Nations Gender Inequality Index and the Gender Development Index. The former measures differences in employment, empowerment and reproductive health between men and women. While the latter compares males and females regarding health and living standards, according to these indices, some countries are more gender equal than others, but no completely gender equal nations exist. The mating practices in the Scandinavian region, where, which is the most closest to gender equality, are now characterized by high numbers of single adults and promiscuity, concerningly low levels of childbirth, declining marriage rates, and high rates of divorce and single parent households. These factors contribute to this region having the world's highest occurrence actually of single parent households. So data from these Nordic countries support that a polygious mindset, large groups of women finding a smaller pool of men desirable is a significant factor in those outcomes. Data reveals that this is not just happening in Scandinavia, it's happening all throughout Western Europe, to some degree, and in North America, meaning the USA and Canada as well. And you can throw Australia in there too. And it's even sharper in the black community in the United States. In other words, it is a Western phenomenon more than it exists anywhere else outside of the West because of how economically prosperous the West is, because of the economic independence of women the cultural shifts in the form of gender equality culture and technological changes, the way they're affecting the mating market through dating apps, Instagram and social media. So as we've seen in, as women have become more economically empowered in the Nordic region, for example, over the past several decades, a large percentage of men have become economically a lot less attractive to them. This, this occurs because as the women rise economically and educationally, the number of men they perceive as being of a lower status gets bigger and bigger as their economic status surpasses that of many men. The number of men they perceive as attractive decreases because women don't find lower status men desirable. This produces a growing population of women competing for an increasingly smaller population of men. The ultimate cause for this effect is women's evolved mating preferences and how they have responded to the changes in the ecology I just spoke about, as in economically prosperous nations, gender equality culture, the economic and educational ascension of women. All of that is causing women to raise their mate standards to a degree that is just unrealistic, unsustainable and actually unattainable. And we can see this in research published in the 2024 book by David Baker called The Shortest History of Sex. It lays out the evidence showing how Western women are raising their mate standards in a level that is just mathematically unattainable. From an evolutionary point of view, what we see is history repeating itself. We are returning to the long history of polygyny, at least a mild form of it, that we were practicing before social and legal monogamy spread throughout Western culture and the rest of the world. So historically underperforming men struggled to attract women. Women focused on men who were industrious, ambitious and productive from a resource point of view. And we are returning um, to this pattern. So as I spoke about in my last video, this is the pattern called the polygynous mindset and the evidence for it is all over Western society. So if we take a look at this comment from David Baker's book, 
he shows the the standards where women are going um, in terms of the men they desire. And we see also the statistics on dating apps show that women are focused on the top 10th or 20th percentile of men. So he says here, the successful minority of men on dating apps tend to be exceedingly handsome, photograph well, imply they have well-paying jobs and often advertise their height. To illustrate the point, there's a popular meme related to modern female mate choice, 666 meaning at least six feet tall with a six figure salary and a six inch penis. Yet only 14.5% of men are six feet and over. Only 20% of men have penises six inches or longer and only 13% make six figures or more. If you want a man who has all three, the percentage is less than 5% and not all of them are single. With roughly 49 to 51% of the population being female, this is a disaster in the making. The lucky minority of men are more than willing to meet up and have sex with these large numbers of women, but are less likely to date them in a committed relationship. And that is the big difference between men and women, because women are not willing to date low value men or have sex with low value men, never mind being in any types of committed relationship with them but high value men will, as long as it's low investment. So a woman lower in mate value that offers herself to a man of higher value, a man will accept that offer as long as he only need invest a low level of material and social resources in her. So you will have sex, hang out with her a little, but the romance, the expensive dinners and trips, texting her every day and spending lots of his time with her, that kind of material and emotional investment is reserved for women closer to him in mate value, if he's even going to offer it at all to any woman. The hard part is telling this to, let's say, the woman in the video, giving her that information that her opinion of her, her value is inflated. She's not going to receive that very well, and she will continue to chase what she finds desirable and will continue to experience disappointment and unhappiness and stress because the men she desires will continue to treat her as only worthy of a good time, but not a woman to take seriously as a girlfriend or potential wifey material. This fact you're looking at here is what causes men of high mate value to engage in casual sex with women well below their own mate value. We do not see the opposite in women of high mate value having casual sex with men well below their value. It works for high value men as long as their level of material and emotional investment in the woman is minimal. When the woman starts asking for more investment from the man in the form of time and effort and perhaps money and material investment, that is when he decides to turn her loose or ghost her. And of course, this is a source of great stress for women. Women's hypergamous nature creates this weakness. Their hypergyny causes them to go after the more high value men and those high value men will accommodate them as long as they don't have to invest too much in them. And the internet dating age gives a lot of higher value men the ability to exploit this effect like never before in human history, because it's so easy to connect with people, large populations of people, whether they're male or female, because social media and internet dating, it allows men and women to do that. So the internet allows these chads and tyrones to build what I am calling a smartphone harem. And in a week or two, I'll have a video about the chads and tyrones because we need to have a deeper dive into their behavior. They have all these women on their rosters linked to them in situationships. As the woman in the video described, that behavior she described is, is pretty much a situationship. These guys are having the time of their lives and there is zero incentive for them to change this behavior because based on the polygynous mindset that they share with the women they're involved with is actually a winning strategy for these chads and tyrones to follow for many years because the level of material and emotional investment is so low. While at the same time, it allows them to invest a larger share of their resources they hold in more sexual opportunities. They can pursue more sexual opportunities because they're keeping the amount of resources they invest in women quite low. So they have the time and the money 
to chase other women and have a large roster of women they're seeing concurrently. So these women are just a text message away on their smartphone harem from setting up a sexual encounter. The level of effort they need to employ is minimal, but the level of sexual payoff they get is maximal. So I will focus specifically on these guys in a week or two, because we do need that, that deeper analysis of why um, let's say men in the top 20th percentile are going to behave that way. However, our focus here has been on the misjudgment of one's mate value and how it can be so stressful to those who are misguided in that area. Uh, I really don't have a solution for that woman because you can't tell her to go after guys who she's not attracted to, but these are the guys who are going to respect her and treat her with love and generosity and loyalty. But the guys that she likes they're just not going to value her the way she values herself. And I don't think she can really change that. And unfortunately, I think she's going to waste a lot of time on these Chads and Tyrones and just really end up, you know, being bitter and really unhappy with her experiences with the men that she actually is uh, attracted to. So all of this you can find uh, throughout several chapters in the new book I published on Passport Bros, Modern Women, and the Battle of the Sexes, um, the evolutionary psychology of the Passport Bro phenomenon, and the gender war it ignited. If you've uh, learned or liked anything um, that you saw here in today's lesson, please like, you can ask questions, leave a comment, subscribe if